Jesus of Nazareth was a Jewish itinerant preacher. In his late twenties, he began to appear publicly in Galilee and Judea. Later, he was crucified by Roman soldiers by order of the Roman prefect Pontius Pilate. The New Testament, the Holy Scripture of the early Christians, is also the most important historical source for research on Jesus. Jesus appointed his successors, proclaimed that the kingdom of God was near, and called upon his people to repent. After his death, his followers proclaimed him as Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Son of God. The result was a new world religion, Christianity. Even outside of Christianity, Jesus has gained great importance. Now we will describe the role Jesus plays in the different religions, and several people will share their personal experiences with the love of the great saint. Like all Jews, Jesus believed in one God. According to the Jewish faith, He is the creator of the world. He made a covenant with the Jewish people and gave them the Ten Commandments. Jesus was Jewish. He celebrated Jewish festivals and preached in the synagogues. The first Christians were Jews. With the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, Christians and Jews share a common written foundation. Both religions consider the texts to be a source of faith, hope, and the encounter with God. But Judaism does not regard Jesus of Nazareth as the Son of God, because, according to the Jewish belief, a person cannot be divine. In Judaism, he is not seen as the Messiah as he did not bring about the final transformation of the world as prophesied in the Old Testament. Jesus is seen by the Jews as a sage, as a prophet, or as a courageous personality who rebelled against the tyranny of Rome. Jesus preached to his contemporaries about a loving God, and thus Christianity was born. Some Jews believed Jesus. Others did not. This is how Christianity gradually emerged from Judaism. Today, Christianity is the religion with the most believers. Christians believe that God loves the world and its people and that he has shown himself to them as a human in Jesus Christ. In Christianity, the Trinity signifies the essential unity of God in three aspects. They are called God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit. Currently, there are nearly 2.3 billion Christians worldwide. With about 1.2 billion members, the Roman Catholic Church is by far the largest Christian denomination, followed by the Orthodox, Protestant, and Anglican churches. 
St. Peter's Basilica is the largest of the Pope's basilicas in Rome and the center of the Vatican. In the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope is the successor of St. Peter and thus the head of the Church and the Bishop of Rome. Every Wednesday, the public papal audience takes place in St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. To partake is a special event in the life of a Catholic Christian. Jesus has different meanings for Islam and for Christianity. For Christians, he is considered the Son of God and therefore the origin of their faith. For Muslims, he's one of the major prophets of the Quran as he announced the coming of Muhammad. In contrast to Judaism and Christianity, the Quran distinguishes between the work of a simple prophet and that of an envoy of God. The Prophet Muhammad and Jesus did not come to change the basic tenet given by the earlier prophets, the belief in one God but to strengthen and renew that belief. Jesus is called the messenger of God because in addition to his prophetic work, he received revelations from God later disclosed in the gospel. Christianity is thus a world religion recognized in Islam. The Church of the Nativity is located in Bethlehem, on the site where Jesus is assumed to have been born. This church is one of the few intact buildings still existing from the time of the early Christians. A 14-pointed silver star marking the place of Jesus' birth can be found under the Nativity altar. This site was honored as Jesus' place of birth as early as the second century and continues to be an important place of pilgrimage for many Christians, especially Catholics. Many visitors from all parts of the world regularly come to this special place.
Jerusalem is considered a holy city by Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. Poetic and religious titles, such as the biblical name Zion, or the holy city, designate Jerusalem as the home of the one God, which both Jews and Christians honor. The Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount of Jerusalem's Old City is the third most important place of pilgrimage for Muslims. According to the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this is the place where Jesus prayed the night before his crucifixion, prior to being betrayed by Judas Iscariot and arrested by the emissaries of the high priest. Next to the Garden of Gethsemane stands the Church of All Nations. It owes its name to the fact that its construction was made possible through donations received from all parts of the world. The building is also meant as a reminder of the moment when Jesus became aware of his forthcoming suffering caused by his betrayer. Nearby the Church of All Nations is the tomb of the Virgin Mary. Worshipping the Mother of God is of great importance in Catholic and Orthodox Christianity. The sacred tradition of Eastern Christianity teaches that the Blessed Virgin Mary received a special grace. On the third day after her death, Mary's soul and body ascended to heaven, accompanied by her divine Son, Jesus Christ. On the way to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, we pass through the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem. According to historical reports, in the year 301, the Armenians were the first to make Christianity their state religion. The Passion of Christ began a few hundred meters behind the Lion's Gate, just north of the Temple Mount. This was the route Jesus followed to his crucifixion, while having to carry his cross most of the way. For that reason, the street is fashioned as Stations of the Cross. 
one often encounters pilgrims along the way who strive to sense the way of the cross. They grace to follow you unceasingly without regard for human respect. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre stands on the traditional site of the crucifixion and the tomb of Jesus. This church complex is one of the largest sanctuaries of Christianity and includes the location of the tomb and the nearby Mount Calgary. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is the seat of the Greek Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem and the Catholic Archpriest of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre. Jesus was crucified in the presence of his mother. The Greek Orthodox altar presides over the Calvary rock, above the site where the cross of Jesus and the crosses of the two criminals stood. Jesus prayed there for his tormentors. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The stone of the anointing upon which the body of Jesus was placed after his crucifixion is especially revered by all pilgrims. The site of Jesus' funeral and resurrection is in a separate chapel and forms the center of the sepulchral church.
India plays a special role for Christianity, as it is considered to be the origin of all religions. Jesus reportedly lived in India for many years before he appeared as a preacher. He is said to have spent a considerable amount of time with Indian monks and saints. Later appeared in India the Thomas Christians, those following the teachings of the Apostle Thomas, who is said to have reached the country in the year 52. The history of Catholicism in India began about 500 years ago with the arrival of Portuguese missionaries. Many of the modern influences in Indian society can be attributed to Christianity. Christian missionaries helped to found schools and colleges and thus influenced the spiritual life in India. During the English colonial era, the St. Mary's Cathedral was built, which is the oldest Christian church in Varanasi. Here, as everywhere else in the world, there are regular church services according to the Christian traditions. Jesus is well known in India as well. There are about five to six churches in every major city of India. People gather every Sunday in these churches. They sing songs, read verses from the Holy Bible. Children are taught about the life of Jesus through various stories and orientation programs. India is known not only for its rich culture and food, but it is also a country where all the major religions of the world coexist together, Christianity being one of them. Jesus Christ was a great Messiah of God. He came on earth to teach the eternal principles of truth. He was a divine incarnation on earth. He taught his followers how to pray. Jesus Christ said, Pray to thy Father in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Prayer has to be a sincere offering from the heart and there should not be any public display of our love for God. The Lord's Prayer is my favorite and uh, being uh, studying, uh, since I studied in convent school for some time, that's where I got acquainted with it. It's a beautiful prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Amen. At all times, believers have tried to establish a direct relationship with Jesus. The best known testimonies of such experiences have been given to us by the great saints.
even today, believers and spiritual seekers long for an immediate experience with Jesus and His love. Guided meditations or visualizations can help one to connect with Jesus. In visualization, the image itself is not so important. Important is what you feel during the visualization. At a, at a certain point in that guided meditation, I was standing on a, on a path and the, vo the voice from the tape said, well, now look, there is someone approaching you and s see who it is. And that moment, for me, it was not, I mean, there was a path and I was having the feeling there is someone coming, but actually it was more like someone descending from heaven. And intuitively I knew this is Jesus and he was like, like an angel. It was awe-inspiring for me. And I have to say, in that moment when I first saw him, he was, he was so beautiful. And he had a very wonderful long blue robe. And the expression in his face was so humble and devout. And I, I actually couldn't um, resist following him, even though I was reluctant. And intuitively, I had the message from him that he is a servant of God and that, was, that it was God who sent him, that he shall guide me to a certain place. So I followed him and he brought me to a place that was not on earth. It was somewhere in the heavens and it was like a huge, infinite portal of light. I had never had an imagination or I had never seen anything like that. And the moment I was standing in front of the portal of infinite light, I knew that this is my encounter with God. This is the beginning of my relationship with God. And at that moment, Jesus, again, he bowed to me and said, well, that was my job to bring you to that spot. And then he disappeared. So in this entire experience of me becoming a baby Christian to me becoming a minister, um, I've realized we're all supposed to believe in the same thing. You know, I've, I've realized that we're all sons and daughters of God, no matter what culture we grew up in, no matter what religion we grew up in. You know, we're all his sons and daughters. And for us to truly come into that identity as sons and daughters, it takes a lot of prayer. It takes a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting. And it takes a lot of obedience uh, that most people don't have. Um, it takes a lot of obedience to really hear his voice, to really do what he tells us to do. Uh, because at the end of the day, the church is only one aspect of the kingdom of God. Um, when you really understand the kingdom and how the kingdom operates, you know, you're talking about a new world order. You know, you're talking about everyone being on the same page, no matter what government uh, they, they grew up in, uh, they grew up following, no matter what nation they grew up living in. 
you know, imagine every single leader of every single nation believing in the same word of God. And that is truly what the kingdom of God is about. Lake Shrine in Pacific Palisades near Los Angeles is a World Peace Memorial. This site belongs to the Self-Realization Fellowship, a worldwide spiritual organization founded in 1920 by Paramahansa Yogananda. Lake Shrine is a place of contemplation, spiritual renewal, and represents the unity of all religions. In addition to the representations of saints of different religions, there is also a statue of Jesus Christ on the property. Will Jesus come again? Yogananda answered, Metaphysically, he is already omnipresent. He smiles within every flower you see. In every speck of space is the feeling of the cosmic body of Jesus. In every breath of wind is the breath of Jesus. Through his divine Christ consciousness, he is incarnated in everything that lives. I think the most important question for us all is to ask, how can we actually become like Christ in terms of how can we, how can we ingest his message to a point that we can fully understand it. To me, the historical figure of Christ doesn't have the same interest or the same importance than rather the consciousness that he brought, and that is maybe as modern today as it has been 2,000 years ago. To me, the most exciting development these days is that we have methods more from the East, I would call them meditative methods, um, where we are able to experience higher levels of consciousness and to combine those methods with the message that Christ brought and try and understand him more from the inside rather than through his words is to me the most important thing in religion right now. Um, his words have been grossly, grossly misunderstood and misinterpreted over centuries and I think the biggest question and the biggest help for humanity these days would be to understand him more from the inside. And to this end we actually need a very personal relationship with Christ and one that we can attain through meditating on his message and meditating on the consciousness of him that is still here today.
Many people have surely asked themselves what really took place in the soul of Jesus. How would he have described or put into words what he experienced? Through his life and example, Jesus embodied love and forgiveness in a way that had never before been experienced. Jesus existed and consists only of love and joy. He had understanding for his tormentors. To those who plagued and tortured him out of ignorance, he gave nothing but love in return. There are even records of the inner life of Jesus. Maria Cecilia Bailly was the Benedictine abbess in the San Pietro Monastery from 1743 to 1746. She saw the life of Jesus in visions and wrote down these revelations in a book she called The Inner Life of Jesus. Renowned popes, theologians, and experts in mystical theology are all in agreement that the contents of this revelation are of high religious value for its readers.
ਦਾ ਯੂ